Welcome to the Life on Tap podcast, where we help you rediscover your potential so that you feel confident, clear, and independent. Have you inadvertently put yourself last all these years by putting others first, only to wake up in your midlife and find yourself lost in the shuffle? Girl, I have so been there. Let me share with you the lessons I've learned to create a new direction to rediscover yourself. Together, let's go on a journey of mastering your potential, tapping into the power that already exists inside of you. We'll talk confidence, self-care, organization, health and well-being, money mindsets, financial hacks, and how to kick your limiting beliefs to the curb for good. We will find and establish your vision, get crystal clear on it. This is your blueprint your life untapped. I'm your host, Francine Rivera, lifestyle consultant and certified health coach. I'm also the founder of the Life Untapped coaching system, where you can earn as you learn with our affiliate program. Check it out at thelifeuntapped.com and grab our free mini course, The Guilt-Free Balanced Life, while you are there. Are you ready for your blueprint? Let's dig in. Hey friend, welcome back. I am so glad you're here. I am continuing on our discussion surrounding vision. So if you heard last week's podcast, and if not, go back. I think you should listen to that one first. Um, So this one makes more sense, but I'll leave that up to you. We spoke about different ways how to create a vision for your life. I mentioned that most of the females that I talk to don't really know what they want because it's been so long since they put themselves first or allowed themselves to even dream that it just feels foreign and icky to them. All right. So why do we need a vision? I like to tell people it's almost like if picture a ship floating in the ocean and just going wherever the winds and wherever the waves take them and there's just no real direction and they're just going where everybody else wants them to go, right? So you need a vision, so you know what road you're on, so you know your roadmap, you know your blueprint, you know where you're going in life. Otherwise, you're just going to go where everybody else takes you. Now, it is really easy to get distracted and lose sight of what's important to us. When we get disconnected from our life's directions, other people's agendas are going to just come before our own. And before you know it, it's going to be five, maybe 10 years later, and you're like, oh my gosh, like what happened? So your vision isn't going to eliminate distraction. It's going to inspire you to focus on what matters. Vision is going to provide your clarity for the future while directing us to place our attention where it has to go, right? In the present moment. What are we doing at this moment? Is it going to take me closer to my vision or is it going to bring me further away? So having that compelling vision statement, and again, we spoke about this in last week's episode, writing down a few sentences to keep that in front of you all the time because where you're focused That's where your attention will go. So having that vision statement is going to light up your way in the darkness. It's going to inspire you in the moments that you just don't feel like it, that you're annoyed with something or somebody and you're just not really feeling it. That compelling, personal, individualized vision statement that you wrote is going to bring you back, right? Just bring you on back. Okay, back, back to where... Back to where I go. I'm going to go back on the road. So it'll inspire you to shed all that stuff that's holding you back. Now we're going to talk about things that might be holding us back this time. Reasons why we struggle with vision. And I think there's a bunch of underlying reasons and we're just going to tackle a few of them here. So when you understand these blocks, it can free you from the resistance that keeps you from creating your personal vision statement. All right. We all have blocks. So it's, it's, not personal. <laughs> we all have them. I have them. I I work tirelessly to get through my blocks. As I mentioned last week, again, I still work with the coach. I believe in always up-leveling my life. All right. One of the reasons that can hold you back while you struggle with a vision is this cultural conditioning. So that's our society. That's our upbringing. I think from an early on, we're conditioned to make life decisions based on just a few limited range of options, right? It was go to college, get a good job, go to college, get a job, buy a house, go to college, get a good job, buy a house, 
eventually you're going to retire with enough money. Like that was just the messaging. That is probably still the main messaging I would think out there. So that's a limited range of options. What if you don't want to go that route? Well, no, then, then, you know, you're going to be sleeping on maybe your parents' couch in the basement to your 40. I don't know. <laughs> you get the picture. So we have some of the cultural upbringing is meant to protect us. Our parents don't want to see us suffer. Our parents don't want to see us take risks that, you know, they're going to steer you towards the engineering degree versus the liberal arts degree. Okay. There's a lot of truth in that, but again, it's cultural conditioning that keeps us in the lines to make life decisions that are safe. All right. Great things are not achieved while staying safe. We're going to make choices based on what's in front of us, based on what we believe to be available to us. So if you're conditioned, if you're brought up with the scarcity mindset, you're just not going to be thinking, you're not, you're not conditioned to believe that your, that your choices are infinite. All right. So creating a vision demands that we draw from an infinite range of choices, which oftentimes will make us feel uncomfortable. So again, summarize, we make choices based on what's in front of us, what we believe to be available. And we don't usually step out of our comfort zone. Second, visualization. Visualization is a skill, but that's the good news. Skills can be learned, right? So it's like a muscle. And if you don't exercise it, it's going to kind of like shrink and go dormant. But we're going to practice. We're going to work that muscle, girl. All right. We're going to work on that visualization and I know it feels a little bit uncomfortable and just like picking up that like five pound dumbbell at first in the gym, right? It felt heavy. And then, I don't know, after maybe six weeks, maybe, you know, ish, you picked up the eight pound dumbbell and you're like, oh, this is hard. And then maybe a little while after that, you picked up the 10 pound dumbbell. That's how it's going to be with your visualization. It's a skill and we're going to work it and we're going to grow and being it's a skill is really the good news because it means we can improve. Now, it's going to feel uncomfortable, but do it anyway. The more we visualize, the better we get at creating from our own imagination. Third, and this is big. This is like a really big reason that holds a lot of people back, myself included. We're afraid. We're afraid we're not going to succeed. We're afraid of being embarrassed. We're afraid of making a fool out of ourselves. We're afraid of saying something and then not being able to follow through. Sometimes we're even afraid of success. And I know that kind of sounds a little weird, but it's true. There's lots of people who are afraid of success, of becoming so big that they won't be able to handle it and manage it. So that holds them back. We question our competency, our ability to persevere. We're uncertain of our value. Are we worthy of dreaming big? And we play small. Now that goes back into, again, what I mentioned last week, that when I work with women in the coaching program, first and foremost, we establish their identity and then we work on their vision. Okay. It's like a two-stepper right there. The first pillar, the first module, identity, vision. That's your foundation, guys. Foundational work. So if you're not believing you're worthy of dreaming big, Uh, we need to stop and go back and work on your foundation. The unlimited range of options that we must draw upon scares us too. Sometimes so many choices scares us because we're just scared of making the wrong choice. And then we think the vision has to be perfect. We believe we need the right vision, the perfect vision. So the perfectionist in us needs to craft this ideal vision statement that's timeless and true for all eternity. But what did I tell you last time? Your vision statement is a living, breathing document. So it's yours. It's okay. Write it in in pencil. It's okay to erase part of it and tweak it and adjust it as you grow. And, And that means through the seasons and as you evolve. And that also means as you grow in personal development, maybe you realize, oh, I don't want that. Maybe I was dreaming or reaching just a little bit too small, you know, and you want to go bigger or you realize you just don't want what you thought you did. Stop being a perfectionist. I am a recovering perfectionist. I feel you. I know what that's like. So when you're a perfectionist, it doesn't reflect reality. So become aware of that false belief and no longer limit you. 
So there's another reason why people struggle with finding their identity. They're not getting into the right mental and physical state before doing this process, before doing this exercise. So you're going to create this vision by going through this whole discovery process to clarify what's most important to you. And you need to be in a frame of mind that you're open, alert, centered, and ready. So it's a mindset, guys. Mindset is everything. You need to get your mindset right. There are tons of books out there. There's books, there's coaches, there's therapy. There's everything but an excuse, okay? No excuses. Your excuse is a well-planned line, my friend. Test me on that. Test your test your excuse. I bet you it's a well-planned lie. All right. So those are some reasons. I'm going to give you some exercises now. All right. So you can like work through the well-planned lies, right? Work through your excuses. So exercise number one, quiet your mind with your breath. Get into the right frame of mind is key, right? So you have to find your center. You have to be relaxed. If you're anxious, if you're worried, if you're nervous, if you're stressed, if you have anger, if you have unforgiveness, this isn't going to work out so well. So you need to stop your mind from racing. You need to stop your mind from ruminating about a past experience or trauma or episode or this theme that keeps reoccurring in your life. You need to invite calm, empty your mind, but be alert. So there's breath work, okay? I'm not going to get too much into that now. You can Google it, Google breath work, probably go to YouTube and watch some videos on that. That will help you feel calm and centered and no anxiety. Let slow, steady, rhythmic breath and you will feel calm to start the vision exercises. All right, next, connect to your heart. Place awareness on your heart. So follow your heart. I know everybody says follow your head. And I believe there's obviously there's truth to both of those statements. But breathe out and say to your heart, like, thank you. Thank you for connecting me. Thank you for, um, you know, beating inside of me and giving me life and help me to follow my passions and my desires. So it, it's, it's kind of intertwined with the first exercise with the breath work is just connecting to your heart. And then once you're in the right frame of mind, you're going to be able to proceed and discover what's important to you. Okay. So again, just to rehash a little bit from last week, you're going to focus on your strengths, your passions, your dreams, right? Your skills, interest, things that you want to do. And then you're going to craft your own personal vision statement. This is something I help females do. If you want set up a free call with me, there's in the show notes, there's a link for a free discovery call, okay? If not, just get yourself a notebook and just do these exercises yourself and create your working vision. Look at it as your first draft. It's not for perfection, it's just crafting your vision to capture the things that are most important to you and it can always be altered. All right, my friend, that is it for today. I wanna thank you for listening And as always, remember, you are worth it. Thanks so much for listening. But before you go, if you found value in today's show, I would love it if you would take a screenshot of this episode and share it with others on social media. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and head on over to iTunes or wherever you listen to rate and leave a review. It is how we can empower, educate, and shift how others visualize their lives. Until next time, my friend, remember to live a life untapped. You are worth it.